Okay, so the, the reason there is a Creation Magazine Live at all is largely due to your influence, Rod. Uh, you were the one who initially said, okay, this information needs to get out to more people. And it started It started with a, with a, a creation conference at your church, right? In 2005. I mean, that's yes. uh, years ago, 16 years ago. Well, it is good to have my good friends here, Dr. Silverstrew and also DeRuz, Dr. DeRuz, and uh, my good friend Richard Fangard. And Richard and I... Uh, go back about six months. <laughs> and uh, we had started a church uh, in Orangeville and at the ranch, the teen ranch, and then we realized we had to move into town. We bought a theater, and we got the theater all ready, and we began the church and started growing it. And I, I realized, wait a minute, this Creation Ministries International, at that time it was called something else, but I said, these people are talking about Genesis 1 through 11. Yeah. We need to we need to get them in here, and so I invited you. You came in, and there you were doing it. So it was awesome. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we had that that conference there. We we and did. That and was that was the start of it. Well, <laughs> when I heard the conference, I was stunned at the greatness of it. You guys use PowerPoint, and you use all these other techniques to present, and uh, and I thought this is great. We did a, a Friday night, a Saturday night or Saturday in the day, and we did a Sunday, Sunday in the morning, day. Yeah. And uh, so I, I realized, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is amazing information. Everybody needs to know this. So I said to you, Richard, why don't you do it on television? Why don't you do it on television, man? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, and that had just never, never occurred to us before to, to do, uh, I mean, there's obviously TV shows on creation evolution, but it had never occurred to us uh, here in Kitchener to do a TV show that just wasn't part Regular of it. Regular so, television yeah. program showing people and teaching people about the importance of what God's word is and what yeah. because everything's different now and everybody's trying to you know get into the evolution thing and all of that but you are telling the truth and that that needed to be presented. Yeah. So we said yeah. present it. Now I yeah. said I said remember if, if I said this I said Richard we're going to provide all of the <laughs> yeah, cameras yeah. and yeah, all I the audio that. and all that but it, when the cameras are on, it's you. Yeah. Whatever you do with it is what, what yeah, your so show you is just, live. You just kind of hand it. You provided all the technical and the, and, the, and the personnel, the experienced people, camera operators and audio and lighting and all that kind of stuff. And I remember you saying that. You just said, <laughs> if, you two, if you guys just sit there and say nothing, well, that's your show. It's, it's going to be on air. So, so I thought, oh, that's how it's going to go. So, that's, <laughs> that's right. And you guys did a great job. And you were at the stage on the front of the church. And, yes. Uh, it started off as a live yeah. to, to internet, not to yeah. tell, live to internet broadcast for one hour. We sat on the stage of the church, mm -hmm. moved the drum kit aside. and uh, Yeah. <laughs> and people would say, well, 2005, that seems like ages ago. But... Actually, uh, we had a network called the Bible. It's called Bible Discovery TV now, but that network was on the internet, and we had that since 1996. Yeah. So I said, let's put it on the streamtv.com. You were one of the first churches to live stream. Everybody's doing it now. Yeah, but everybody were, is. We your, were one of three. Technical one background. Three. You were you were all wired up at the church there to do that. We were, and so we we said, you know, put this on live. And so I watched, and I could see people coming on, and watching it, and looking at you, and, and how you did things, and. I said, this this is it. And I, I realized, you know what? This should be recorded. It should be recorded, yeah. It should yeah, be. I remember you telling me that. <laughs> okay, guys, this is, you know, we got to record this. we got to have, have breaks and cutaways to give yep. the audience. So you can't just go for an hour straight. you got to have little cutaways in there to give the audience a mental break and so on. You explained uh, the, the preferred structure to us. Yep. And uh, because do it the, like this, do it like this. information that you were providing with the PowerPoint, with all of the materials that you were using was so good that a lot of, to you, it's you're just providing. But to a lot of people, the first 15 minutes is like, that's more information than they ever got in high school. That's more information. And they've got to think about it. They've got to yeah. understand it. So yeah. you had to pace it out in such a way. And later on, you started doing themes in your program, which is excellent. And uh, we still air Creation Ministries live on our program. It's not live, but Creation Ministries International's right. program. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's still on Bible Discovery TV if anybody wants to check it out. It's excellent. Six times a day. Yeah, six times a day. Wow. Yeah, because we okay. program a, a loop and we just cycle it through the loop. So yeah. it's good. Yeah. 
Awesome. That's great. So it was it was often it was it was fun doing the shows because of course the crew wasn't familiar with a lot of the creation argument. They were not. The basic the basic stuff most Christians get or most Christian yeah. most informed Christians get. Uh, especially you guys, you've got your own creation focus there uh, now and then. But um, some of the stuff was quite new to the crew. So we'd, we'd shoot a segment and then, and then take a break between segments and prepare for the next one. And some of the crew, the camera operators, are, what? what? I didn't know that. And then we'd, so there'd be these ongoing discussions, but when the cameras were off, yeah, should have recorded that. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we had a, a great time because it was not just the cameras, but it was also the person directing. And it was also the audio person and all of that. And I yeah. said to them, I said, because they had listened a little bit here and there, but I said to them, you need to listen to this. And so they heard it and they started getting it and they got it. And they, I remember one, okay, Rachel. So you were instructing them. I was telling them. Okay. I said, okay. listen to them. Uh, well, they were listening. Yeah, yeah. And they did. <laughs> and I said, I said, you need to, you need to hear what he's saying. And so I remember Rachel. Uh, she was, uh, and at the time, Rachel McDonald was somebody who kind of understood, but she didn't really. And she came to me after the taping where you taped your first programs. And she said, this is amazing. I said, I know. And her husband, mm. Andrew, who also worked for us, he said, yeah, this is incredible. And they, they got some of the books here and all of that. And they began to read it because they had just graduated high school and come out of high school. And they, they didn't get any of this. And they saw yeah, this and they yeah. said, wait a minute, I need to get educated. And they did. They're, today, they, they work up north and they're just doing a great job. But I'll tell you, it, it affected the crew uh, unlike anything. It could have been the best thing we ever did for the television crew. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and the audience got the benefit too. For sure. Yeah. Of course, the, the greatest memory comes to mind when I, I started getting feedback from the audience because we listened to... Uh, the people who watch the stream, they email me or whatever. And uh, the, we had a mixed review. We had some people saying, this is great. We had other people saying, well, no, this isn't great because of evolution, all that. And I, I remember thinking at that time, this is truth. And truth brings out in people good and bad. Truth will confront people. Yeah. And the people who hear it will say, yeah, that's truth. And they'll confront people and people say, no, that's not truth. That's not what I believe. That's not what we think. And I remember that occurring. And yeah. uh, we that's why we kept airing CMI, and we still do today, <laughs> because people need to know the facts about the truth. And the yeah. truth is Genesis 1 through 11 is not an allegory. No. It's not a story. And I'm a pastor of this church, and we're trying to teach this as well. And I had uh, actually I've had some church members leave as a result of it, but I had more people come and say, I was never taught this. I need to hear this. Yeah. So it was yeah. really, really interesting. You, you had a, uh, like a studio webcam, a, like a I, live, I like did. a fly on the wall kind of thing. I did. And I remember whenever we were taping, or for, for not, not all the time, but there was folks from, I think it was Germany? They were from who were, everywhere. Who were there? Germany. I remember the German couple, and yeah, they, they would send in right. comments. And, and <laughs> That's right. They were from Germany. They were from the U.K. There were a lot of people from the U.K., from Spain, believe it or not, and France, and all of these different places. And they were watching the webcam. We had a webcam on the wall that we would yeah, stream yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and they watched the webcam, and they, they began to ask me, well, who is these people? Who are these people? You know, and I, we got a chance to explain to them. And it was awesome yeah. because people didn't know. See, the, the, the problem is people don't know. And they're trained yes. in a certain way. But then when they hear something unique and different and the truth over here, they know because the Spirit of God tells them this is true. And they know. And that's really important about the ministry here. And I, I want to emphasize that is that people need to know. They need to know the truth about Genesis 1 yeah. through 11, that God did this. You know, we weren't an accident, but God did this. And we need to understand that our lives are not an accident, but our lives are designed and created. Yes. That became a key aspect in this. Yeah, yeah. And that area of apologetics, like if you think, you think of apologetics, and then the evidence for the truth of Genesis in particular is a subset of apologetics, but that has grown so tremendously. But it, it's like you said, people need to know this. So there you get into delivery. So exactly. how do you deliver it? Obviously, there's books and there's, there's DVDs and there's, there's things we can do, but there's, there's media 
There's that we can get this on TV, we can get it on Roku, we get it on and any other streaming services out there. And it's it's the delivery of good faith encouraging, faith building information that needs to be delivered. It's great to have. There's a huge body of this great faith building information today. It just needs you need to do something with it, right? I think that one of the key aspects, especially coming out of some of the events that we've we've been into with pandemics and everything else, is that when the truth is presented on television, when the truth is is displayed, people recognize it and they say, "Yeah, that's it." And, you know, and, and we need to understand that the internet has grown in terms of viewership, and I watch about sixty percent of my television off the internet now. Yeah, and so it continues to grow. And so this becomes very important. Now, the stations are very important as well. Stations that air you. And if there's a station watching this that doesn't air you, I would say, why not? You need to air them. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's true uh, because people need to know. And yeah. television is a way to get to the individual. When somebody's watching television, they're not watching in a group setting like a church or something like that. They're watching one-on-one. -on -one. And so you're talking mm -hmm. to the person, the individual person, one on one, and they're more open for personal things. One on one, one of the things they should be open at. Your life is not an accident. Your life right. is right. created by God, and He's trying to communicate that to us. The Bible says that, and He's trying to communicate that to us. And if we listen to God, if we listen to the Lord, then uh, we'll get that. Any other memories of of the of the show? I remember the webcams. That was uh, yeah. The webcam was good. The other the other thing that. Uh, when we had, what happened is we moved out of the church into another building for the studio because we do a television program daily called Bible Discovery TV. We take people through the Bible. And when we moved to the new studio, I remember asking you to come and be a part of that, not the move, but be a part of doing your show there. And you right. came, and that was very interesting because we had a full-blown studio. Before, we were doing it upstairs in the gym yes, and all yeah. that. But now we had a full-blown <laughs> studio. And that was another graduation of CMI to a full-blown uh, situation. And I remember you guys coming in. You came in, and you nailed those things. You got them in a theme, and you got them. You nailed them right off. It was perfect. And with, again, the staff, we loved watching it in the closed-circuit television. We broadcast that, of course, every day on Bible Discovery TV, but it was really good uh, sensing the way that you had organized everything and planned for it. So you have grown in developing the program. You have figured out how to do that, and I would say that is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. We've. We. I mean, with with anything. I mean, if if you're not, uh, if you have a reasonable amount of of self criticism and you're looking at your own work and 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 the end result of it, it it's. You, you do improve with time, right? Practice makes perfect, as they yep. say. And so as we, I remember first using the teleprompters, that was awkward, right? <laughs> because you're, 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 you're reading something, but you're not supposed to use a reading voice. Because right? you're not you, reading. But you're, technically you're, you're, you are reading. You're not reading, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're, it's like you're communicating to a person. So use your normal speaking voice. Yeah. So now suddenly we were actors, you yeah. know. And so that took some getting used to. But then, and then content, we've we've focused on, uh, how can we keep the content uh, really, really have, have very information-rich shows and that kind of thing? And that, and that progresses every year as we, we look back and as we're, especially in post-production, you, you watch the show over and over and over again as it gets to, toward completion. Yeah. And you see some of those things, right? Oh, okay, that, we, we can do that better. Let's, yeah. let's, let's work on that. Let's do that better. And so that, that's, uh, it's nice that you're seeing that. Others are too. Yeah, well, I think that the important part to remember is that television is one-on-one. -on -one. And so when, you, when you, you're, you're an actor, you have to sort of become a little bit of an actor to present yourself because television yeah. does two things. Number one, if you're not an actor, you're just reading, you're very boring. Number two, it puts <laughs> 10 to 15 pounds on you. So, I mean, you know, everybody's going to yeah, be more. <laughs> I... <laughs> but uh, with me too, yeah. But anyway, the, the idea is that when you get used to that, sort of presentation mode, you can talk to the people like never before. And I think that's one of the differences, the subtle but key differences in television versus the pulpit. I speak in both. And the pulpit, I'm a distance away from the people, right. and there's a pulpit I'm in front of and all of that stuff. But in television, I'm right there, and they are right there, one of them. 
And it's very important for us to pay attention to the differences there because there are differences. A lot of pastors, they preach in their pulpits and they, they advertise that and they say, we're on TV. You're on TV, but you're not really on TV because you do both. And that's unique. And I do both. And so we have to keep in mind that it's not that we're trying to be an actor, but we have to understand that our our actions and our sensitivities have to be exaggerated somewhat right. so that yeah. they get it. And because the television technology dumbs things down a bit, and when we're exaggerated, they understand it. And uh, it becomes very important for the person one-on-one. -on -one. Different environments, different places. We've seen that in the last year and a half. Yeah, brilliant. That, that's uh, you've got in, you've been you've been doing this a lot longer than than I have than we have at CMI, but uh, interesting insights. Yes, yeah. the church um, and the best way I can explain this is to I was at a church and they were in this pandemic time, and they had beautiful cameras and they had equipment and they never really had a crew, and uh, their crew was all volunteers okay. and it looked like they had you know, not a good situation. And I okay. came, I said to the pastor, I said, have you ever thought about building a solid TV crew? Well, no, I never, because, you know, it's just TV and we got the best TV. And I said, okay, but it's a waste of equipment until you get a good TV crew. Okay. And that TV crew means shooting, but it also means editing. And it also means putting together things well. And... Through the course of six months, we worked with this church, and I want to tell you something. They they improved tremendously. They really did. And they've got one person who's the director, and they've got three people who are the camera operators, and two people who are the audio people. They understand it. And now you look at their program and you say, well, that's like a regular television program. What's the difference? The difference was not the equipment. They didn't spend money on equipment but they trained and focused on a TV crew. They made that a ministry in their church. So I think right. that if churches understand that, you know, buying a bunch of equipment is not how you get on the internet. I mean, you could get on the internet that way. But if you want to do a serious television production, you have to get a crew together and you have to put that in place and you have to train them with the right person. It'll take you probably a year to get it done, but then Make incentives for the crew. Uh, you know, take them twice a year to dinner or something and and thank them for their volunteer work in the cameras and all of the work. That's a key aspect to really understanding television. You've got to get the crew. They've mm -hmm. got to be in place and they've got to be a ministry. Another key understanding is to realize that, again, as we said before, a pastor is preaching from the pulpit. And he preaches from the pulpit. Let me ask you a question. If you ever watch some of the TV ministers on television, you see they preach from the pulpit. But they always do something at the end or at the beginning. They come to the camera. Yes. The last two yeah. minutes. Or, why do they do that? Well, some people say, well, they do that because they want to. They don't want to do that. But they understand the people behind the camera. They want the person behind the camera. They don't want to work more, but they want the person behind the camera to know that they're there for them. The pastor has to really think about the, the camera as a person. So when you think about the camera as a person, you got three or four cameras in your church, think of those three or four cameras as people, one mm. individual. Don't broadcast to the millions, broadcast to the one. And when you see the people in the church, also broadcast to the person. And look at the cameras and talk to the person too. Look at the people, talk to the people, but look at the cameras and talk to them too. Because that's very important. And then the other thing to remember is if you want to do a television program, then you need to come out of the pulpit and sit on a chair or stand up or something and talk to the camera. You can't do it in the church. You've got to do it on camera. On camera is one way of communicating. From the pulpit is another way of communicating. That becomes very, very important. So the, the mm. pastor has to recognize that, and he has to see that this is the communication of the future and the communication that we're doing now. And the other thing to remember as well is that your your people in the crew, uh, and, and the best way to say it is usually, and I see you've done that here, usually there's one person that you hire. And that one person is the production guy, okay? 
And churches, if they want to take and make television serious, a serious ministry, they've got to hire somebody. And they've got to find the person and they've got to hire one person. And that one person has to be, in a sense, I'm using this term um, because ministry refers to serving people. I'm using this term loosely, but a minister of media. And okay. that person okay. has to be able to pull together a volunteer crew. But that person is in charge of the media. And he has to be the one to pull it together. But it's still hiring of a person. You have to hire one person, whether part-time or full-time. My suggestion would be full-time because there's editing involved. And you need to do that. I see you've done that here as well. And you're not even a ministry in the or a church, but you're a ministry that's in the church. And I see you've done a good job at that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we need to. So. Yeah. So the, there, there's a lot of shows on Christian television or religious television that uh, that are, uh, what, what can we say about those shows? They're, they're not presenting a very accurate gospel, right? Uh, there's, there's a lot of things there. So, so our, I mean, your show takes people to Scripture. You're taking people through the Bible. And our show is, here's why it's true. Here's evidence that supports what the Bible says. Both our shows are taking people to Scripture and then the next show that's on after, after one of our shows might be something completely off the wall. So the, the, the question is, and I'll, I'll throw this question at you, is, is should we be on? Should we be on religious television at all? My answer is we should be on every television station. Okay? <laughs> I knew you'd say that. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, in the midst of this and, and, you know, the extreme prosperity doctrine, all that is wrong. Yeah. Okay. And we have been called to present the Word of God, the over 730,000 words in the Bible, to present that to people. You have been called to highlight why it's true and what's going on. And with scientists and some amazing things you do and with mm -hmm. the discoveries in science, there are people who have learned that television can be a place where you can make money. And if, you're, if your idea is to make money at television, my suggestion is don't do it. <laughs> Just don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. If your idea is to tell people about what God has done in your life, to speak the gospel, to fulfill the commission of Matthew 28, to explain to people that Jesus Christ is real, that he's alive and he's changed you, then you need to do it. But I would say this. Remember that that's your primary goal. And remember that you, you can't, you know, a lot of people say, pastors will say to me, they'll come up to me and say, hey, Rod, so you're in the TV business. So I want to get in the TV business because I want to make lots of money. And I laugh at them you, and I you've say. You've had pastors? I have had pastors say that. To really? Me. They wow. said, I need, our church needs money. We, and I, I look at them and I shake my head. I say, you are in, the, you need to go get in a gold mining search somewhere. Because this is not, television is not the way to make lots of money. It's not. Now, TV stations ask for money to air your program because they also have electric bills and all these bills they have to pay. They, I understand that. But there comes a point where you're, the station makes that back and they try to make a little more. And that's, I don't think that's really right. But nevertheless, I, you know, I own a TV station, but that's my view. <laughs> anyway, the point is that our programs are designed to take people through the Bible, to use this time to take people through the Bible. And I think that's very important. We've got to spend our resources on production, television production, fulfilling the production. Yeah. And you have yeah. to spend your resources on getting to the churches that you're making a presentation to and all of that that becomes important, but also resources on CMI. And I can tell you, how much money has CMI made you? And you would probably say to me, zero. <laughs> it's been a massive loss. <laughs> if you just, I mean, if yeah. you're just going to look at finances, I yeah. mean, if, if it wasn't for the rest of the ministry, we wouldn't have a media department. We're, uh, going out to churches, that's our main, our main ministry, is in-person meetings in churches where we connect people to the resources, and then a, a portion, a small percentage of those people that are reached really get turned on and they donate. And so we have Canadian donors that support the ministry. Yep. But it's generally not through uh, 
the, the production of, of the, the TV show, yeah. that income comes. If we were to tally up all of the expenses of, of producing this, uh, it's crazy. It, it wouldn't be paid for. Yeah, so. it, it, that's exactly right. And I can tell you, I'll give you one example. There's a station uh, in Vancouver, and the station is a great station for us. We, our ratings tell us we have 150,000 people watching at this particular time, and it goes up and more. But we have 100 people in Vancouver who've actually given to the ministry in the past year. Yeah. So yeah. it does not make money, let me tell you. <laughs> but at the same time, we have enough to pay the bills. Yes. To pay the bills. Yeah, God and provides. We, and it's the same that's here. exactly right. Yeah, it's the God same God provides. Here. So I think that, that uh, we should be on as many stations as we can, but we should be careful. A, a lot of pastors and a lot of people... Uh, they, they're, they're bound up into popularity with television. And uh, that's interesting, but you shouldn't really focus on that. You should focus on, has God called you to be on TV? Has God called you to speak on TV? When I started with your program, I remember praying and saying, Lord, this is good material. What do we do? And God spoke to my heart and mm -hmm. through impressions, he said, put them on the air. And so I went to you and I said, just go on the air. And I remember you saying, why? Why? You know, because there's people there. He's like, why? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's how it started. But yeah. but the idea is you have to listen to the Lord. Is the Lord calling us to television? Is the Lord calling you to TV? God has selected individuals, selected people to communicate his word and to communicate apologetics and to communicate things that are important that he wants his people to know. And that's exactly why you're doing CMI. And I'm glad you took off with it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, so I guess the answer is we, we want to be on as many Absolutely. platforms, as, as many media outlets as possible, whether that's TV or, or now, of course, Internet streaming is is, uh, is the, the, the main big platform. Thing. It's the yep. big thing, yeah, and it will be in the future. So About 50%, actually more than that, about 54% of our audience, uh, our giving audience, is using the Internet now. So that's more than half our giving audience. So I find that fascinating. We have a lot of people who trend us on YouTube and trend us on Facebook and trend us on the website. And we do a lot of things on the website. But about 50%, 54% of the people, and it's continuing to go up slowly. Yeah, but it's continuing yeah. to go up. And I find that fascinating today. Well, you've been doing your show so long that... 31 years. 31 years now, 100% of your audience was not on the Internet 31 <laughs> years ago because there was no Internet. No. So. <laughs> we started the Internet uh, broadcasting on the Internet, and it was really an interesting broadcast a little picture that big and you know <laughs> you know squirreled up into 15 frames uh but we started in 1996 and we were using tape then so we would we had three hours of tape and then we get to the end of it, we had three machines an hour each we don't know what to do so i had a little machine and i put my wife saying please stand by while we rewind the tapes on the stream please no, stand by no. yeah we and what we did <laughs> we did that and we we put up uh cameras around the offices and I would say, everybody, you're on the camera, smile. And so they would go like this, and it would switch between the cameras. Oh, okay. And that's what we put. Well, my wife was saying, rewind. please stand by while your tapes <laughs> rewind on the stream. Please stand by. And that's what we did. Oh, how far technology's they, come. Our, yeah. our, our staff talk about that a lot today, which I find fascinating. But anyway, that's, that's what it was. Yeah, amazing. Rod, you've been in, in broadcasting so long, both, both Christian and secular, if we want to break it up in that way. Um, but there are differences, aren't there, between your traditional, what, ABC, NBC, NBC, uh, that kind of thing, CBS, and, and your, your Christian broadcasters, NRB in the U.S. and other major networks. I think the, uh, the, the biggest difference is that the productions, and they're learning through the pandemic and through everything else that they cannot, you know, just do what they used to do. But the productions, if somebody... If you take Tim the Toolman Taylor, okay, okay. They, yeah. they have expenses involved in that production, and those expenses are tallied together, and whatever they say it costs, uh, you know, $150,000 a program or whatever they say it costs. And then they give that to the salespeople, and the salespeople sell that to advertisers. So advertisers then go out, and they, on the stations, they give it to the station. The station gets half the ads, and the network gets the other half of the ads, and they sell the people, Procter & Gamble and all the different people, and they say, we can get you a spot for 500 bucks on this spot, two spots for 1000 
three spots for, you know, 1200 they'll knock it down a bit. And they sell that way, and uh, that's how they make their money. Christian broadcasting is different because of Matthew 28. Jesus said, go into all the world and tell everybody about the good news of Jesus Christ. Christian broadcasting was originally designed to speak Matthew 28 and to talk about that. By the way, mm-hmm. Jesus also said, and teach them all the commandments. Yes. So it wasn't just share the gospel, but teach them all the commandments, yeah. which is what you guys do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the Christians have to come on the air. Now, back in the day, 47, 48, they started playing with TV. And then right around, it was actually black and white. And, and it was, I think, 48, the first broadcaster, Christian broadcaster, came on and and offered money to somebody after two years of broadcasting. And the station said, hmm, money. Yeah, we'll, we'll charge you 10 bucks a program. So he started paying 10 bucks a program, and that started this whole thing of broadcasters. Then later on in the 70s, we started getting licenses in the United States of America for Christian stations. And the broadcasters at that time said, we have electric bills, we have costs, we have this, the other. we got to pay for that stuff, so we'll charge you airtime. And so that's what they did, and that's how the airtime grew. Okay. So okay. when you pay airtime to a secular station, you're paying for the time that the that they would put on, that they would sell advertising. They're not going to sell advertising in your program, but if they were to sell advertising, they would sell it at a certain rate, and that station will give you a discount. Christian broadcasting is different. Christian broadcasting, you got to pay to help them support their ministry. Yes. So that's the, I guess, the complicated side of it. But simply put, uh, what they did is they got involved in uh, seeing how much they could get for a time slot. And we, I say to people with with our program, I say, I have no money. That's how I start when, when I'm talking to a station. And you, you, I have no you, money. You gave us the, the same advice. Yes. To, to farm I did. out to different networks. I did. Said, Here's how you approach them. Exactly. You have no money. Can't pay it, can't do it, can't do it. So that's it. And then the stations will will go back and talk about it, and they'll get in their service meetings, and they'll say, well, we can't can't afford that, but we can afford this. And tell them we'll put it on free if they say to us, you're a good station or whatever on the air or whatever they do, or see if they put it on free. And that works. But you have to remember, there are certain places that you go on the air where you have to help them out a little bit. But helping them out a little bit is different than what some of the stations are paying for airtime. And that's the biggest difference between secular and Christian broadcasters. Yeah, I just, I just found it odd that uh, when I first learned of that, likely from you, uh, that, that, well, there's stations that now you have, I mean, we, we knock our brains out to put these shows together and, and, and build a studio and do all the research to get everything right and, and get a good image and high, high quality and so on. And then you have to pay the stations to broadcast your program, yeah. like, it, what in my naivety back in the day, I thought, well, wouldn't stations pay us? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't they like to have our program on their station? And that's just not the way it works. Because they can't recover the cost. Yeah. If you because yeah. if there's because no advertising, there's no advertising, and the typical half hour broadcast um, that's a secular broadcast is 22 minutes and 30 seconds. 22 minutes and 30 seconds, but your broadcast is 28:30. Right. So. You take the extra time. Now, what are you going to do with that extra time? And that's where I tell people, if you, if God speaks to your heart about supporting us, please do. Send whatever God speaks to your heart. He'll talk to you. The Holy Spirit will talk to you. And we will put that in our contributions and we'll apply that towards the television program. So we gain people that way and, and we, we grow our list and uh, we communicate with the people. That's what we do. We don't, we're, not a, we're not a company, but we're a ministry that responds to their needs and responds to their problems. That's what we do. And you get letters too. Yeah. And oh, that's yeah. what you do. Yeah. yeah, it's great. But yeah, there's there's no advertising there. So it's uh it's all it's all up to up to donors to fund and anyway, we, we talked about this. The only the only most of the stations that our shows are on yep. are those stations that'll take it for free. Of course. <laughs> we, we could, of course. We could fundraise and we could get on to some of the larger stations, but uh uh, that has limits, of course. It does. So we've we've got we've got the internet. Internet streaming has, in the last, well, how long has it? it hasn't been that long. Say five years. Yep. Internet streaming has has taken off. 
with the emphasis in the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. With, yeah, with the, with the coronavirus uh, especially, everybody ditching cable. Cable TV was was big, and it's uh, uh, for quite a number of years there. But uh, but now it's now you, you might have you might have a cable coming into your home, but it's got internet on it. Exactly. It's, uh, so what's on the horizon technology wise? What do you see? Uh, I, I told you before when we were talking about it, we used to broadcast or send the big tapes to stations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then the smaller tapes, smaller tapes, then drives, and then finally the internet. Um, there are two distribution points that should be noted. The stations themselves, and I put the stations like this, they broadcast a signal that can be received by anybody who has an antenna. Now, who has an antenna anymore? Most people are watching the internet on their television set. Well, I've got an antenna. But I do too. So how that's long good. is that going to last, though? Well, is that... That, that's a good question. <laughs> so the stations have started broadcasting on the internet. Right. And they put their program on the internet, the Roku box and all of the stations yep. at Google Television, uh, Amazon.com TV, which we're on as well. And uh, they broadcast. And they realize that they're no longer a station just in Augusta, Georgia, or just in Cleveland, Ohio. But now they're a station where everybody can see them. Yeah. But the internet is different. The internet, and I'm, I'm answering your question, but I'm doing it in a, in a certain way. <laughs> the internet is a unique place where people go for it. But in a city, you have a certain amount of people who can watch your signal. On the internet, you have the whole world yeah. who can watch your signal. The competition on the internet is so intense. You'll be lucky if you get 20 people. And the stations have figured that out. And they're starting to figure this out. So you've got to advertise, put your resources as a station into advertising where you're at and what you're doing and how you're doing it on the internet. And so it becomes interesting because I watch the stations on my Roku box. All the stations were on. So there are two aspects. There's distribution on a station, which is becoming less and less, and then there's distribution on the Internet. On the Internet, which we broadcast on and which you're on and all that, we have to begin to think about advertising and making ourselves known. So I've got three people now who work on Facebook, YouTube, and the Internet. Yeah. And I pay them full time, three people, because that's what they do. I came in and saw your offices this morning, and you introduced a person who, well, she's on our Facebook and she's on our internet. Yeah, exactly. You've learned that you've got to be on the internet. So the distribution on the internet has removed itself from the technical. You've got to have a good program, but from from the technical aspects of distributing on tape and all that, it's moved to. We've got to now move into how do we advertise this for people through email through advertising in places and spaces, you got to do that. Advertising is a big, big place you got to do that. So distribution on the internet, distribution on the stations, I think the stations will always be there because the stations are always on the internet. Some will fall off, but they'll always be there. And there are people by the hundreds and thousands disconnecting from stations and connecting to the internet. Yeah. And to get them is a little more challenging to get them on the station. Okay. And but you're, so, but you're, you're, you feel that the stations are going to survive? I do Most feel that they're going to survive okay. because there are people that, like me, I still watch stations, but I watch them about 40% of the time. Yeah, like and for local stuff. I do. Right? Yeah, CTV yeah. in Toronto yes. and all that yeah. stuff. I can watch them on the internet, but I just kick over to the antenna and watch them off the antenna as well. But, and by the way, the signal's cleaner on the, off the antenna. Just saying. Just saying. Right. Anyway, yeah. uh, but the idea is that both station and internet will be there. So really it's a, a broadening of the expansion. So yeah. I think that, uh, but we've got to pay attention to how this is going to go. I don't know what this, that's my suggestion. My guess is that they're going to continue, but I don't know. Because I, I also couldn't have guessed the pandemic. So, I mean, I don't, I'm guessing the <laughs> yeah. best I yeah. can, but, you know, that's the way it is. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So there's opportunities there for... Uh, for the church, for people who've been called to, uh, to, to use that medium, the, the, video, the, the medium of video, and, uh, and yep. get that out to the masses. Yeah, that's right. But, but remember, the, the churches, if they're not paying attention to the production of the program, because I've, I've watched people, and on the Internet they'll say, 
Oh, yeah, I saw that. It's, it's, it's a podcast. And then they'll watch our program, and they'll say, yeah, your program's a television program. Why is that? Mm. Because of the production value. Yeah. It's yeah. the production value. And the production value is there. If you're going to do something on the Internet, you want it to be watched, then you've got to really deal with the production value and make it a good thing. Because if you don't, you're just a podcast. Yeah. Either that or have cats. Yeah. Cats seem to be very popular. Cats doing weird things. Yeah. On the Internet. That gets millions <laughs> exactly of views. Cats. <laughs> I remember we, we had a... <laughs> Back in the day, we couldn't afford um, Exterminator, so we had this cat. And because Exterminator said to me, just get a cat. It'll take care of the mind. And, we, and he did. But that cat was hilarious. It was called Easy. I, we, we were going to make a web page. Easy? Easy, easy the cat. Easy, yeah. Oh. And we because it was easy to get, you know. <laughs> and so anyway, we saved a cat. And uh, he lived with us for a long time and until uh, we moved and we gave him to somebody. But the Easy... Always got into stuff we didn't expect. He was, he was into the roof. He was into, but he was chasing mice. That's what he was doing. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Did but he ever make it on screen? He did. did. Oh, did he? He did yeah. make it on screen. Yeah, one time, my father was doing a teaching, and the cat walked back on on the set. Walked back on the side. Said, "That's the cat." And I told my dad. He said, "Just leave it on. Who cares?" <laughs> and we had letters. And yeah. People said, I love oh. your cat. I love your cat. There you go. But anyway, yeah, or a cricket running or whatever they do, you know, so very interesting. Yeah, cool. Anything else come to mind? Just that we need to keep broadcasting and keep doing. When I say broadcasting, I use that in a sensitive term because you are speaking to, whenever you go on camera, you know, you're speaking to thousands of people, tens of thousands of people. And you need to, you need to remember that. And... Um, when you do your production and set it up, and I see all the studio here and all that's great, you need to remember that the production people who are standing over there, that they are important. And if you're going to continue sure. doing this, and that's yeah. great, I say I, I cannot be more thrilled with coming here and seeing the studio and everything because it, it just it's amazing, and people need to know about Genesis 1 to 11. They need to know. Yeah. So I think that's important. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks Rod, so much. Great, great advice. You're experience in broadcasting really really pays off really a lot of a lot of good advice there but thanks so much for like initially as we said you were the one who initially uh got us thinking on uh, got us onto that track of media and so on and i remember you telling us uh initially that uh, it's a monster because as soon as you put something out there people are going to start asking for more and more and more and the more you do the more people will ask for well can, can you can you do it weekly well can you do it daily well, no, I need it hourly. No, no, but, but I remember you saying that. But thank you so much for seeing the information that CMI has, has uh, 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 gathered and, and researched and so on, seeing that as so valuable as to, and, and then approaching us and saying, you got to get this on video. It needs to be broadcast. It needs to be out there. And that was... Uh, CMI is very yeah. important ministry, a great ministry. Continue it. Keep working. Keep moving. God has got his hand on your ministry, just go for it, because God is doing it. Yeah, and you've blessed us so much, the partnership there that started years ago, and uh, and, and just just having us come in and, and uh, here's a crew, here's a studio, come on in, guys, you're so warm and welcoming, come on in, here's some chairs, let's turn on the cameras and make a show. That was, uh, thank you so much for that. You're welcome.